Welcome to the introduction of the kinematics of crystal violet fading lab. Uh, this is the packet, as you can see, from uh, Chemvax, a chemical company who makes these sort of labs for us. It's got the background here, the concepts we'll be using, introduction, procedural on the left page, um, and some practice questions on the right page. Especially focus there on question number two, uh, because you need to do that in order to know how much of the crystal violet and distilled water to add for some dilutions that we'll be using later on in this lab. One of the, here's the crystal violet that we're using. It's this really uh, purple dye. Um, this is actually 25 micromolar, which is a super tiny amount. So just to show you how uh, like purple that sort of thing can get. Um, but we'll be using this 25 micromolar crystal violet as well as some distilled water to dilute down to 2.5 micromolars, five uh, seven and a half, ten, and twelve point five micromolars. Uh, we'll be eventually comparing each uh, dilution and each concentration uh, in a colorimeter to see how well the light is absorbed by each of those concentrations. And here actually is that distilled water that I was talking about. Uh, again, that we'll be using for these dilutions. Here, uh, you can see that there's actually two pipettes that we're going to be using. Um, you'll want to make sure to use two separate ones so as to not confuse the two. Um, use one for water and one for crystal violet. They actually have a really high measuring of precision here with uh, markers every tenth of a milliliter, uh, so that'll be good for precision. Uh, here, I'm getting 10 milliliters of water into the pipette. For solution A, we only need 9 milliliters of water, so you're going to end up scrolling down. Um, you can play with it, figure out how these sort of things work, um, but you'll be using the pipette to get 9 milliliters of water into a beaker for the first one of the dilutions. Just like that. There's a button on the side to release some of the water, so it'll make sense in person. Uh, and now we have to do the same thing with the crystal violet. Again, just remembering to use a different pipette uh, as to not like uh, prematurely mix the two solutions. The tiny amount of crystal violet in the bottom of this pipette is actually one milliliter of it. Uh, so we'll be adding that to the beaker from for solution A in order to dilute to 2.5 micromolars. Uh, from here, you're actually going to want to do the same sort of situation using water and the crystal violet, probably in that order, uh, to make the six solutions that you need. So you're going to want to make these uh, six solutions. I know I say six and there's only four here. I made four kind of just to show that the different solutions and the different dilutions actually have different like varying colors. As you can see, the lighter solution A with the lighter color and the darkest solution being the stock solution. You're going to want to fill these cuvettes about like three quarters to four fifths of the way. Um, be careful with the cuvettes not to touch the sides directly as it can mess up later on in the lab. Um, but yeah, you'll want to put these solutions in there. So each solution gets its own cuvette, but before we do anything else, what we have to do is calibrate this. So we move the light over to 565 nanometers, uh, the appropriate wavelength for the colorimeter to work. We want to put in a uh, cuvette filled with distilled water the proper way, with the clear sides going with the arrow um, and the direction that I just pointed at. Uh, so from there, what we can do in order to calibrate with the distilled water um, is we close the colorimeter and click the calibrate button. It says cal on it. Um, there's a red light that blinks kind of at you just to tell you that it's uh, calibrating. Um, but what it's doing is it's making sure that the absorbance level is reading 0, 0.00 uh, like it is right now. So our machine is properly calibrated. Uh, from there, what we're going to do is actually, now that it's calibrated, we can use the colorimeter appropriately. Uh, here is solution A, again, making sure that the clear sides go with the arrows the appropriate direction. 
uh, we can close that and wait for the um, absorbance level to stabilize. It's stabilized at 0.18, uh, so what we want to do is we want to keep this point. So we press keep, uh, and we change the concentration. So for A, it was 2.5 micromolars, uh, and the appropriate absorbance will be kept with it. I failed to mention this earlier, but in order to use the second part with the keeping the data points, you need to change uh, on the bottom left, you need to change the mode um, from time-based to event-based. You should do that earlier on, actually, uh, so that's my mistake for not including that earlier, but you need to include it to event-based so that you can actually uh, change uh, and input the data like that and be able to keep it in such a format. Sorry about that. You also want to continue on in the same manner. So this is B, moving on to B, put it in the colorimeter, uh, close it, record the data, do the same thing for C, D, and E in the stock solution, um, and include the uh, water too. Once you have all of that taken care of, you should get a graph that looks something similar to that. Uh, the data over there is on the right, um, showing concentrations 0.0, .0 all the way to 25.0. Uh, so, what we want to do is we want to get a curve fit. So, if we go to the apply curve fit, and the best one that makes sense here is linear, um, because you can see that the graph and the data is approximately a straight line. Uh, there's, of course, some variations above or below. It's just how things work. Um, but apply the line of best fit, click the apply button, and you will see that you have a format y equals mx plus b. Uh, this is going to be really, really important um, in the second half of this lab, especially. Um, but this calibration curve is what it's called. Uh, the Beer's Law calibration curve is going to be in this line, and we can use the numbers there to uh, help us later on. Especially note that concentration is on the x-axis and absorbance is on the y-axis. Uh, but yeah, that'll be especially important later on. Um, but yeah, now that you have the calibration curve, which is the Beer's Law half of it, um, you should be done for this, like, section of the lab. Uh, for anyone who needs it, the data is on the right. Uh, yeah, all the way from 0.0, .0 micromolars to 25, uh, what I recorded when I put my, uh, crystal violets into the color emitter. Um, so yeah, there you go. That should be it for this part of the lab at least, uh, and you'll want to print this off and keep this table um, because it'll come especially handy later on when we start to manipulate the data. Thanks for sticking around, and hopefully you found this to be useful, uh, whether you're in person or remote this semester.